back and, and thank you, Z, for, uh, for inviting me to come back and talk to everybody. You know, you broke my heart on the Rome slides. I got to tell you, that's, I've, I've been really lucky and had a chance to travel around a lot in my time at Gate. Rome is still on my bucket list. Haven't gotten there yet, but hopefully, uh, hopefully I will soon. So anyway, it's, it's great to get a chance to come back and, and talk to all the, the, uh, the Zurion and iForms users. It's, uh, this is always one of my highlights for the year because I get a chance to come back and really hear about the, the, uh, the innovation and the imagination that other Zurion customers are putting into their projects. And we always come away with good ideas and, and at times humbled because at times I think we are really pushing the envelope and doing some really cool stuff at gate. And then I, I see what, what uh, other folks are doing and I always come away with uh, great ideas and, and the idea of why haven't we been able to go farther. So I want to give everybody a little update today. Saw a bunch of new hands in the, uh, in the crowd here of new folks. But <clears throat> before I get going, I, I want to have a little fun here. Uh, you know, kind of get the blood and adrenaline pumping a little bit. And, and so as, at, at Gate, I get the opportunity to go around and do, do workshops for, for the mobile data collector in various parts of the world. And so after an hour or so of talking, I always like to throw in a, you know, a, li a little fun. So I have a little section I do called uh, Famous Technology Quotes. And these are famous quotes or infamous quotes from, from uh, you know, our innovators and, and, and politicians or technology leaders uh, from the past. And so I just want to throw in a couple of these and see, uh, see how, uh, how intuitive people, uh, people are on some of these. So I only, only threw in a couple here because I know we actually do want to do some business here today. But uh, let's, let's do a couple of these. So during my, during my service in the United States Congress, I took the initiative in creating the internet. Al Gore. Al Gore. OK. Well, maybe that was too easy. <laughs> OK, correct. That, that was Al Gore. And, and obviously, you're showing your age, Ryan. Uh, a lot of these folks probably don't even know who Al Gore is because they've been born too late. But yes, that was our, our, our Vice President of the United States uh, trying to worm his way out of saying something extraordinarily uh, un, unintelligent. So then, not soon thereafter, came this one. The day I made that statement, I was tired because I was all, up all night inventing the camcorder. Okay, well, let's just dig that hole a little <laughs> deeper. And just to finish off this string, we have, if Al Gore invented the internet, I invented spell check. Who wants to take a stab at that one? Come on, Z, Z promised some great Zurion swag here for, for, you know, obviously very expensive, no doubt, for anybody to get some of these right. No guesses? Former Vice President Dan Quayle, well known for his, his spelling prowess. Okay, so that was fun. I just got one more here. And this is, this is my personal favorite. Get your feet off my desk, get out of here, you stink, and we're not going to buy your product. This, this is, yeah. <laughs> could have been. Could have been, but this, this is obviously one of the most nearsighted uh, technology CEOs in history. Vice President of Atari, or President of Atari responding to Steve Jobs' offer to sell him rights to the new personal computer he and Steve Wozniak developed. Wow. Can you imagine how different our lives would be today if he had actually said, absolutely, I want that product. How different our lives in the world would be, probably. Did anybody watch the, uh, the Apple event yesterday, the live stream from the Steve Jobs Center? Wow. Well, I'm telling you, I want to watch. <laughs> I want the watch that you can talk to, OK? I, you know, I have to hide my credit card. My wife already took my credit cards after that yesterday. 
But I, that one was really high on my list. But that was very cool stuff, got my adrenaline pumping, and really made me happy that, uh, that I've lived that long to see this kind of evolution in the technology. OK, enough fun for today. Let's get to business. Let's talk a little bit about Gate Group. If you haven't guessed by now, we're in the airline services uh, area. And uh, you know, up until last year, I think I said last year, we were going through a lot of evolutions, and we have. Um, up until last year, we were a, a publicly held company on the Swiss Stock Exchange. We're a global company. Last year, we got bought by a very big Chinese company called HNA, which is a big uh, Chinese conglomerate made up of a lot of different companies. It's global galactic, multi-billion, gazillion dollar company. So Gate Group really now is just one small part of HNA. And so far, it's turned out, turned out well. You know, they've let us do our thing. Uh, they obviously have capital, which is always a good thing. And this year, uh, we also, um, as part of that, H&A uh, bought another company called Surveyor. And Surveyor is very big in Paris. For those of you that have been through Paris, Fly Air France, Surveyor is a very large company that also does airline catering and services. So now, Surveyor is a part of Gate Group and a part of Gate Gourmet. So we have continued to grow by leaps and bounds. Just a few quick stats here. Uh, we're on a lot of places. Six continents, 50 countries, 200 plus facilities, 300 plus customers. Last year before Surveyor, we were at about 27,000 employees. Now we're at 43,000 employees and over 300 million passengers served a year. So just about any of you that fly somewhere, sometime have run into one of the gate companies, uh, either as services on your airplanes or eating some of our food. Primarily these days, it appears on international flights. So these are just some of our customers. Obviously, we're over 300 now, but uh, here are just some of the biggest. I'm sure uh, these are all familiar, or some, most of these are familiar to a lot of you uh, as you fly from here and there. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the mobile data collector. Just to bring everybody up to date, we started in 2010. Uh, it was uh, very early on, it just kind of came in as the skunk works through the IT department. Now we're in 23 of our countries, we're being used. 100 different locations using the mobile data collector now. We have 150 forms in our portfolio, which is amazing, Consider we start at one. We add a number every year, some more, some less, but we have another 150 really forms that I would consider active now in the portfolio. We have over 60 that are used every day. Somewhere in the world, over 60 different forms are used every day. And so the question is, well, what are you doing with all the other forms? Well, some of these forms are used monthly. Some are used upon occasion, not every day. But of those 150, 60 get used every day. Last year, we barely missed a million forms being done. Broke my heart. Like, uh, like, like Z, I was tempted to go out there and start seeing how close we could get, cranking off a few forms so we hit that magic number of a million. Didn't quite make it this year. We're going to kill it. 955,000 through August. Um, 201,000 just in the month of August. Last, last August of 2016, we did 99,000. So we pretty much doubled what we're going to do uh, uh, this year. And <clears throat> I have to admit, this is, we're, we're just getting started. This is probably about 10, 20% of what we should be doing uh, on, a, uh, on a monthly basis. So we have a long way to go. Put 1,000 users on there. At this point, I don't know how many users we have. And, and we'll talk about that. We got a lot. That's one good thing about having an unlimited license now. I don't have to worry about, oh, I can't say that. Oh. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, sorry about that. Okay. And um, th this year, or early this year, we deployed on, on, on Android. Initially, we had deployed on iOS. 
now we're on both, both platforms. And in, in, in reality, it's turned out to be, we really didn't want to do this. We did not want to have to support two code strings, two platforms, different support, a lot of different devices. However, I have to admit, this has been fairly pa painless. There are some countries that iOS is just not available, or it's too expensive to make it rational and reasonable to think we can roll it out on any large scale. So that's why we did the Android, and so far it, it, it has not been an unpleasant experience. Okay, what does Zurion do for us? Well, very early on, 2011, 2012, I think we did the, the white box client. We have one of the legacy, I guess we would call it now, hybrid databases in-house. Way back then when we started, we were very sensitive about where is our data going to end up? Did we really, you know, the cloud was just kind of cooking in 2010. It was just kind of out in the cosmos somewhere, and, and it wasn't nearly as mature as it is now. And so Gate wanted to ensure that we always had a copy of our database in-house. So we did do a replicated hybrid database in-house, and in reality, all of our in-house reporting and dashboarding we do real, is really we use our own in-house replicated database. Level two help desk. <clears throat> a couple years ago, we contracted with, with Zurion to do our level two help desk. And so we do have a global level one help desk for Gate, and uh, they escalate now to Zurion for the MDC related uh, incidents. Form development, my man Ben here. Uh, talk to, we talk on a daily basis, and uh, we made a decision a long time ago that clearly we could have, if we wanted to, hired our own people, brought in our own developers, done our own forms. But in reality, it just didn't make sense. When we could leverage Zurion for the expertise to develop the forms and um, really get the cutting edge kind of technology and insights that we needed to do some of our more complex forms. And so we made that decision a long time ago, and uh, I think it has turned out very well. Deployment, they support us on some of our larger deployments. And just recently, uh, as the reporting and dashboarding has gotten more mature, we started down that road utilizing them in really a pilot mode for their reporting and dashboards. Okay, so we know we get a lot of services from Zurion to support us. What do we, what do we, how do we supporting ourselves? Well, we have, as I noted, we have our own level one service desk. We have one offshore developer that we use. We've, we've leveraged Crystal Reports for the majority of our reports. So we have one offshore developer that does that, that also does our our, what I call our performance displays, and I'll talk a little bit about that, and also our interactive iPad displays, and I'll talk a little bit about that. That's it. That's what we got. And, and, and of course, myself, I got Eric up here. Eric, raise your hand. Eric from, from Gate also, he's, he's, uh, uh, supports us with his team on, on interfaces and interfaces to our ERP systems. But that's it. It's really, we have Zurion and one offshore person to support everything we, you're going to see, everything you've already seen, which to me is a, really a testament for the usability and how easy it is to leverage high technology uh, for good. That's it. And of course, I, I, you know, that, no, that's not it. Not it for the presentation, <laughs> but uh, you just want me to move along, okay? So, um, but you know, I, you know, I, I do this, do the MDC about half my time, and, and really as the program manager for it. But that's it. Okay. So, uh, where does it fit in in a gate? You know, Gate's a big company. We're a multi-billion-dollar company. We have a big IT department. Uh, we probably have, I don't even know how many we have, with, with outside resources and internally, we probably have a couple hundred people just in IT. 
Uh, we have our own ERP systems. We even have our own company that develops software in-house for uh, a lot of buy on board, buy on board customers. You know, you have the guys, the, the, the flight attendants running around with, uh, you know, give me your card, scan it, here's your, here's your drink or here's your whatever. We develop a lot of that software for the airlines. So we know mobility. I think we know mobility. It's our business to know it. We sell it to a lot of airlines around the world. So we have a lot of IT in-house. So clearly, we could have done a lot of the things that we're leveraging Zurion for. We could have done it ourselves, OK, in, in what I call the big, big IT. That's big IT department, OK? But, and I kind of consider Zurion part of our, what I call the little IT department. We've got big IT, we got little IT. And you know, each one has their good side and bad side. Big IT is big. A lot of bureaucracy, takes a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of more time, a lot of approvals when you're working with big IT, right? Small IT, nimble, fast on the feet, able to jump into the breach when the customer says the house is burning down, what can you do for me today and not six months from now that's where I think Zurion has, has fit in greatly here at Gate. When we don't have time for big IT, we don't have the money for big IT, but we need a solution. And sometimes those solutions turn out to be strategic solutions. Strategic meaning this is all we're going to use. And this is, for example, compliance, compliance at Gate, where a lot of things were paper forms, Excel, forever, OK? We made a conscious decision and are finally moving in that direction that compliance reporting, whether it's ramp safety, vehicle safety, food safety, gar regulated garbage safety, is all going to be done on the mobile data collector. So that's a, that's a strategic decision. We also <clears throat> do tactical decisions. We need a solution today. We need to do an analysis today. We need a form tomorrow. We need to be able to analyze the data, whether it's the long-term solution or not. Who knows? It may not be the long term. We may replace it with another one of our platforms tomorrow, but today we need a tactical solution. That's where Zurion comes in. Okay? So, you know, the question is, you know, what is it? Is it strategic? Is it tactical? Is it fish? Is it fowl? You know, it, it's kind of, you know, where does this fit in? And so to me, it's always been both, whoop, both tactical and strategic, both fish and fowl, because of the flexibility of the platform and how we've been able to leverage it gate, it fills in both areas. So this is something that we wrestle with every day, because clearly we don't want to step on our own platforms. We have to make sure it fits into our overall global architecture. We don't play in other people's sandboxes. So we have to be very careful where MDC fits into the strategic uh, uh, architecture for gate. But there are a couple other things. What we found out is that for performance management, and I can tell you, we've gone places, if, if in 2010 you had asked me, where are we going with this, you know, I couldn't have envisioned some of the uses that we're using the, the, the iForms for now and the Zurion platforms. Performance management is one of it. Because of the real-time characteristics of being able to record a transaction, sync it in real time, and then have it show up on a dashboard, now we have our finger on the pulse in a lot of our operations that before we didn't know what was going on. And that's what I call performance management. And I never would have thought in a million years that that's really one area where we would be leveraging what initially sounded like a pretty simple, let's replicate a piece of paper on a device and fill out a form. Now we're into this. And last but not least, a fast prototyping tool. And this, is, this one has, is just starting to come around, but I think this is interesting. So before we engage big IT, First off, you got to make sure your business requirements are there. 
The business knows what they want to do. The processes are set, okay, and they aren't evolving. So what we're finding is that, hey, let's use the MDC, okay? Let the business figure out what they really want to do. We'll do it in the MDC, and then once the processes are in place, once the business is comfortable that technology is going to work for them, then you can bring in big IT and make the investment. But until then, let's do a fast prototype on the MDC platform. OK, let's, talk, let's show a few pictures here. Enough talking here. Let's talk about how we're using it. Clearly, operational excellence. Here you have, see one of our truck drivers uh, out on the ramp doing a, doing a safety inspection. We have culinary excellence, where we're leveraging the camera to take actually pictures of our food as it's being cooked by the chefs. Operational safety. As I said, compliance and operational safety is a big piece of this. And here we're actually out on the flight line uh, doing a safety uh, inspection of operators actually rolling trolleys off of a high loader into the, into the aft door of one, of one of the commercial airplanes that we're, we're servicing. Whoop, hit the wrong button. What did I do? I thought you said this was idiot-proof. You lie. Child-proof. OK, OK, OK. There you go. Um, and food safety. Food safety. And this is interesting because this just shows the power of the platform where we have, have leveraged uh, Bluetooth thermometers attached to the iPads or the iPhones to actually take pictures, take uh, temperatures of our products. And you can see here the, the, uh, the guy uh, is taking uh, temperatures of products actually when they're delivered on the docks using a handheld infrared thermometer to shoot the temperature, record it in the form. No more phony baloney, and we are starting to use this a lot, no more phony baloney temperatures or pencil whipping temperatures. Obviously, food safety is a paramount when you're talking about the airline industry. And we consider this finally closing the loop to ensure 100% integrity when it comes to who's doing what and filling out temperatures. Now, this, this, was, this was Ryan's slide two or three years ago, his, his SAMR slide, that I, that I lifted. And I, I like, are, can I have a copy of your new slides? Okay, okay, thank you. I, I, I really like the, the, what you're doing on it. I obviously didn't have the imagination you did, but I think this is important because I, I use this every year. Some, we're somewhere out in the cosmos here, but really what I wanted to show here is talk a little bit about the move from data collection into mission critical. This is where you get your gray hair or lose hair is as you move from data collection into mission critical. Clearly, in a lot of areas now, when we're talking about using the MDC, we're in the mission critical now. So it's not just we're collecting a form, it goes to the cloud, and we'll write a report, and we'll check it once a month. Now it's did the food get from point A to point B when it was supposed to, and the amount it was supposed to, and get on the airplane. That's a big difference. That's when the, the rubber meets the road, and clearly, we need to have different systems in place to support mission critical. You got to have the service and help desk. Got to be available, okay? And I have to admit, the you know the the the, the Zurion platform has been tremendous as far as availability. I don't know how many nines you are, guys are these days, but. I can say compared to some of the big IT systems we've had in the past, uh, we've been very happy with the availability of the platform. The language piece, we're adding more languages all the time to the platform, and we have a long way to go. The real-time feedback, we talked a little bit about that. Finger on the pulse, real-time synchronization, process redefinition, and the, 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 the one that kind of gives us some trouble, sustainability and training. Any of you that worked in big companies, we have a lot of employees, they come, they go. Being able to do a process, do a technology, get it into the field, 
get it going in that heart, getting it sustained in the field every day. When somebody's not looking, when people are coming and going, we have found very hard. And we have great ideas, did the forms, put them in the field, six weeks, we're back to a piece of paper again. And that's the sustainability piece. Okay. <clears throat> How's my time doing? Good? Okay. Let's talk a little bit about what happens when you go from, into mission critical. What happens when you go from a little operation into a big operation? You got a lot of users, okay? You got to create user accounts. Functional logins. This is something we started this year. Up until this year, every user had a login. Every device or user or device had a login. This year, we actually thought, well, wait a minute. We can't do this. We can't put hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of devices out in the field. And every time somebody wants to use it for something different, hey, I don't want this form. I want that form. So we decided to start playing with what I'm calling functional logins. So these people are going to do the same function every day. Here's the login. Everybody uses the same login. OK, if you use this login, you get these six forms. OK, if you change functions the next day, Use this login, you get the two forms for that. That's what I'm calling functional logins. Is anybody using functional logins? No? Wow. Well, give it a shot. Give it a shot. It, it, for in a large enterprise, we found that it was unsupportable having to do every user, every, every form you want, every device. We've got a whole department. Everybody's doing the same thing. Why do we want 40 different logins? Everybody uses the same login. Because, so then the question is, well, how do you identify, how, how do you know who did what? Okay, well, all of our forms, you have to identify yourself. And how do we identify ourselves to a form? We scan a badge. All of our, all of our badges, all of our users have a QR code that has your name on it and your employee number. Okay, identify yourself to the form Use a functional login, everybody uses the same form, but you got to identify. We want to know who did things. Accountability is very important. Scan your badge. We did that four or five years ago. Very early on, we added the QR codes to our badges, and that's how we do that. But that's functional logins. Lots of devices. We have two kinds of devices. We have dedicated devices, which is like your iPad, your iPhone, and we have shared devices. Shared, I, shared devices go to a different person, may go to a different person every day, different people use them. But we all know the problem with shared devices, right? Nobody owns them. That's a problem. But we have both kinds of devices here at gate, and, uh, and so the next thing is, well, how, do, how does the MDC get on the device? Well, we made a decision years ago that every device, every corporate device, has the MDC on it. Whether you use it or not, just like all the other Apple or Android applications that some people use, some people don't use, you're going to get the MDC. You don't have an account, you have to go through and get an account, but we're going to make sure you have a device. We're going to make sure you have access to it if you need it. Okay? And then, so next week, how do you deploy it? We use AirWatch. In 2010, when we started the mobile data collector, we made a decision and really the AirWatch came into gate as a pull through for the mobile data collector, really, to ensure that it got on all the devices and that's how we do our deployments. Every time we get a new, new white box client from Tony and the team, we push it out using AirWatch. Lots of forms. We talked about 150 forms in the catalog. How do, you, how do you assign those things, okay, to thousands of users, okay? And, uh, and then how do you keep it all straight? And I gotta tell you, you know, this has got, even gotten too complicated for me to keep straight sometimes. We've got six versions of the same form, some for this, some for that. It, it really has gotten, gotten challenging. And so uh, we actually have a, a SharePoint site for the mobile data collector. Uh, that Eric and his team put together for us. And we have a, 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 app, a deployment application that I'll show you a picture of off the SharePoint site. 
that actually using the Zurion APIs, somebody can go through our catalog of our forms and select forms that they want or need to do their job. Then we have a workflow behind it because every form in Gate has a form sponsor. IT doesn't own the forms. We don't own the forms. The business owns the forms. And so we don't do a form unless somebody is a business owner of it. They decide who gets them, not IT. Okay? So we have a workflow that Eric and the team developed to, once somebody uh, requests a form, goes through the workflow, the business, pro the business owner can say, yeah, they need it, no, they don't need it, and then we're using the Zurion APIs, they are assigned automatically. Thank goodness. Okay, so we already have that. And here's one I just kind of threw in, because this is becoming a real, pro a real, let me say, challenge for us. It's infrastructure. Everybody wants Wi-Fi these days, right? And our flight kitchens typically was a kitchen. It's a big kitchen. Typically, you don't have Wi-Fi. We had Wi-Fi in our, in our offices, the front of the flight kitchen. We didn't have Wi-Fi or very little of it. So we've had to go through and do significant build-outs to put Wi-Fi in our flight kitchens because now the mobile data collector is getting used and getting rolled out as part of our ERP system. It's used everywhere in the flight kitchens. And coming up with enough, enough uh, access points in there for hundreds and hundreds of users is becoming a real challenge. And so, I, I, you know, so this is clearly something that as you go through your planning process, Clearly, you need to have to think about because whatever you think you need, double it, and you may be getting close to what you're going to really need moving forward. Okay, talked a little bit. This is our, our, our SharePoint site. We put information on there about the MDC, how to do this, how to do that. But up on top in yellow, we have our, our link to our, uh, our uh, request site, our request portal. And basically, what you do here is it goes off your, your login, uh, and it, it, so it knows who you are, it knows what your MDC login is. You go through here and select the forms that you need, and whether you're using a dedicated device or shared device, this thing takes care of all the work and is backed up by the workflow. So this was our solution of doing an enterprise level deployment of the forms rather than going through the admin site and doing things one at a time. Okay, quickly, let's talk about our, the, the big thing we're working on now, which is really the, the integration of the, the Zurion platform with our, uh, our global ERP system. For the first few years, we didn't interface with anybody. As a matter of fact, we, we didn't really want to interface with anybody. We were kind of doing our own thing, and as soon as you start interfacing with ERP systems, you're interfacing with big IT, okay? So uh, really, two or three years ago, matter of fact, January 2015, Tony, Tony came with us to Hong Kong, and we really started what I call the, the SACS technology fusion. SACS is our ERP system. The technology fusion is really integrating the mobile data collector in with our what it will end up as our global ERP system. It's a big deal. We started that a couple years ago. We're continuing to work on it. I think we're, we're close to at least 12 technology pieces based on the mobile data collector that have now working to integrate into our ERP system. This takes it to a whole different level. Uh, the, and we're doing a lot more now than just replicating a piece of paper. Uh, this is just a quick shot. Basically, as we roll out our ERP system, we're rolling out iPads pretty much everywhere. So you see over on the right, this is in one of our, our I think it's one of our make and pack areas. You'll see we've got iPads that uh, allow the users there to see a lot of data. Uh, they see a lot of pieces from SACS, and you'll see on the left, this is one of the documents, the HTML documents that they can look at on their screen. And you can see a couple things on here. One, a QR code, okay, that allows people to, that are using forms separately to go ahead and scan and get a lot of data that they need to fill out their form. What you have on the left here in blue is a hot link. 
And so what we have done in a lot of cases here, hot links have turned out to be very powerful. And it allows one of our users on a display, like we have on the right, to just touch that hot link. And the hot link will, will the MDCs loaded on that iPad. The hot link will start the MDC, pull up a specific form that they need to do their job. Maybe they're going to take a temperature, take data from this document, put it in to the form so they don't have to put it manually so it's right. And then they, they probably will scan their badge to so that they're doing a function and maybe take a temperature. That's the power of the hot link. And we are using that in a lot of places now in relation to our ERP system. Receiving inspection. You see there are a couple shots here, products coming in the door, and then taking temperatures using one of our forms here. We take the temperature of the truck, we take the temperature of the product to ensure that it meets our quality requirements. Okay, so this is food coming in the door, and that's all designed to be used. And before, you fill out a piece of paper. You have notebooks going around. People are filling out the time, the date, the product, the truck, who they are, what the temperatures are. Can you read it? Most of the time, you can't read it. You know, it, it, it was a mess. So this way, uh, we have improved greatly our quality control of our products coming in-house. We talked a little about real time. So they're filling out these forms of products coming in the door, which is cool. And the results, for example, show up on a big display. So the people in procurement and the managers, they know what's come in. They know if there was a problem with it in real time, because as soon as that form is synced with the cloud, it's replicated into a, just a, 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 a website, an HTML uh, screen and it's actually shown on a big television in the area. And, and that's really what I'm calling the performance and management displays. And we're doing a lot of those. This is one, this comes out of uh, one of our flight kitchens in, in Heathrow over in London. And what we've actually done is we've actually mounted iPads on our food trolley, on a food trolley. And the, this is really the inspection process where looking to make sure that everything that should be in the trolley for the flight is there. Are the coffee pots there? Are the spoons there? Are the creamers there? Is the ice there? If they find an issue, they start a internal feedback. IFBL's internal feedback, basically, we find a problem, we correct the problem, then we analyze the problem, okay? This is pretty standard stuff, but basically this is all done on the mobile data collector. We scan, we, 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 uh, we scan a QR code on the trolley. It goes to a, to a display, and this is what I call an interactive iPad display, okay? And you can see somebody touching the display. It goes to another department. It shows up on the display. They touch the display. If they're going to take an act, like, I'm going to fix it, okay? And they have to fill out a form to fix it. So they touch the display, the display pulls up the right form using a hot link. They scan their badge, yeah, I fixed it. Hit done, updates the display so everybody can see it, there's logic in it, turns green, okay? And then the, the results show up on a big screen. Down here in the lower left, that's a screen about this size mounted in the make and pack area on a big wall in Heathrow in our flight kitchen. And then the next day, the manager on his television on the right has reports of what happened good, what happened bad, that you can look at the next day when your shift comes in uh, in your morning meeting. So that's kind of the full loop. That's, that uses a lot of hot links. Now, I think there's at least three, if not four, different forms integrated into that one interactive display to cover every step of the process as it goes through. We also use it in the office. And you see here uh, somebody that's actually working on a particular form. They're scanning their badge in the left. They're taking, making a, an activity on it. And then the results you see on the right 
showing up down on a performance display down on the shop floor. This is just an example of one we're using in our hot kitchen, and I'm not going to go through this, but basically this is an interactive display with a lot of logic built into it. You see this has three different hot links that pull up three different forms that follow the process of cooking a product from putting it in the oven, taking it out of the oven, putting it in the chiller, because you got to get it cold real fast, taking it out of the chiller, You've got so long to do it, you see a countdown timer over there on the right, and then we've, we've included logic in there. So when the process is done, everything is passed, got to the right temperatures at the right time, turns green, everybody's happy. That's, that's our hot kitchen process that we're integrating in with our ERP system. But that is just one example of really using a lot of logic, a lot of hot links, in an interactive iPad display that all calls up forms. All, this, all the results here were done. Everything here came off of data collected by the mobile data collector. And that information, once it's collected, goes to a big, a big TV there in the hot kitchen area. OK, working with Zurion. I dug this out from three years ago. What's good and what's not so good? <clears throat> not the biggest customer, just treated as one. Uh, our, our time with Zurion here since 2010 has been tremendous. Uh, they have, as you said, the, the sixth person on the team, right? Uh, they've made us, us look good. I think for the investment we've made over the years, this is probably our lowest cost IT platform that we have in-house. Uh, and we get, get a tremendous amount for our investment get the chance to, to use the experts here, which is great. We have great access to them, and, and, and the, the, the Zurion team has always been very uh, accommodating and, and clearly free with their time to help us when we really needed it. And they always seem, seem really interested in our business. We've had Tony out with us to a number of our locations. Ben's been down to Atlanta at times, and the good news is they're starting to uh, hopefully by now appreciate the challenges of trying to work with the airlines and trying to put food on airplanes. It's extraordinarily complex and extraordinarily technical because it changes all the time. And they, I think, have gone out of their way to try to learn our business. They continue to innovate, and I think that's obviously in the new products that have come out in the last year or two, and to expand the product base, which I think is tremendous. Z, I hope you noticed I took reporting off of here, okay? That was from two years ago. And uh, so I, I just, you know, total disclosure here, wanted to make sure that, that we acknowledge that and, and, and we're certainly looking forward to seeing more of that. And license administration, you know, the, the, I have to admit the, the admin site's starting to look a little old, okay? So, but other, other than that, I think, and I'm sure you've got something in the pipeline uh, at some point here to spruce that one up. So I think that is what I have here. Uh, we're off into the sunset. Uh, any, any questions? Eric and I'll be around for, for the rest of the day here, and, and by all means, if you have any questions about anything we, we, that I talked about here, any questions about the, 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 the SharePoint sites or the, the, <coughs> the uh, form, deployment portal that he and the team put together, uh, please stop us. And, and again, thank you guys for inviting me and, and uh, appreciate it.